I marked the CG with actually what I could toss this plane with. It's a little piece of material right here, this triangle. And it is at the CG, the balance point of this very airplane that's now completed. So what I'm going to do is I made a test plane. So right here we see I have a test plane, uh, which is made out of the black foam. Very simple structure with the CG in the same place as this. And what I see here is I have placed a weight here on the front of the plane that allows this to be balanced in the same as this CG. So this plane, while a lot lighter, is still at the same balance point. So these are very near each other. Now what I'm going to do with this, it's a test plane that I'm going to use to toss it and just to see the characteristics of the glide. Uh, and it'll give me a better idea, more of a warm fuzzy that my CG is correct. So let me show you that. I'm going to show you a little glide here. And then we're going to go outside and glide a little further. Again, the test plane. See what kind of glide it has just from tossing it at the CG. You see, it does a very, very stable. What you want is you want the plane to stabilize itself. And uh, as it's gliding, you of course don't want it to go up like this or down like this. You want it to be very flat. So it looks like we're in pretty good shape. Now let's go outside and give it a toss. Okay, I'm outside now. I'm going to go ahead and give this a toss and show you what it looks like. It's a little nose heavy. What I can see. At least in that toss. But it could have been because I had the, the plane at uh, the wrong angle when I tossed. Let's toss it a little higher, a little harder. There we go. It still has a really pretty good glide path. It could have just a little more nose weight. So what that's saying is uh, the plane needs to have a little more weight in the front. So what that really means is my CG at this point needs to be a little bit further back here. Uh, it need, because it needs a little more weight, it needs to be a little further forward so it should be about right here so what that really means is the CG on my model which is right here really should be a little further forward in order for it to be a completely long glide but I feel like this will work uh, as it is and uh, so this is a good idea to use G in more detail so this is the CG for this for this piece of material and you know I have a weight here also so let's just assume that this is the CG of this airplane, okay? And by that, what do we mean by that? It's the balance point. If I hold it back here, it will fall that way. If I hold it further up, it will fall that way, okay? So the CG is like a teeter-totter, and it allows the plane to be flat with the earth where we're standing here. And that's the de definition of the CG. Well, with an aircraft, the aircraft wing surface, which is the primary lifting surface here, will have a point somewhere in the center that has the most pressure, and we call that the average or the mean aerobatic center. So the mean aerobatic center must be found by using the geometry of this and finding the geometric center of the wing. That's the first step we need to do in order to find the CG of this airplane, which we do not know. You know, when you get an ARF, someone has told you this information. But if you're building your plane from scratch, you have to determine it by some method. So this is the method that I'm using to determine. What we're going to do is we're going to take these dimensions here, this dimension, and we're going to put it up here. Take this dimension again and put it up here. So we've taken the short dimension and put it against the big dimension on both sides. Now, we're going to do the same thing with this dimension. We're going to take it down here, measure this, take it down here, 
Now, we have the means of finding the center by connecting the dots. Okay, so we've connected these dots from one side to the other, and we have found what's called the MAC, Mean Aerobatic Center. Now let's draw in the rest of the aircraft. Let's say, you know, we have an airplane here similar to the one we have, we'll say, like this. The other parts are not important right now. We're just talking about the nose here and the, the aft side, you know, with its wings. So we're going to draw a line next in our process right across the center, and this is called the thrust line. So on the thrust line, we will now use the information with the MAC to begin to see where the CG goes. Here's how we do that. This is the process of that. Let's use another color. So the first thing we do is we, we scribe a line right through the MAC, going from the leading edge to the trailing edge. And we want this line, which is our green line, to be exactly parallel with the thrust line. The next step is we're going to measure this line, and I'll just do it by eyeball here, like it's in the same place of this line as the MAC. So we're going to find one quarter of that dimension. So essentially we're going to divide this line we've described from the leading edge to the trailing edge using the MAC and using a parallel of the thrust line. Now the 25% here dimension, 25%, has been found to be, through experiments and much flight theory and practice, to be a good number to use. Now what does this mean? Well, we're going to take this 25% distance here, and we are going to move it. If you'll allow me to draw a line straight up in here. And this is at 90 degrees. This dimension that we have just drawn to found, and found to be 25% will be now moved up here, just arbitrarily. This represents our 25% line. So we've essentially taken this and just moved it up. We could have moved it anywhere here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find 25% away from this line toward the front of the plane. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a new line right up here and this is where we're going to put the CG of our aircraft. So that's how we find, find the CG. So let me go over it one more time here just quickly. We draw the wing we use this dimension at the top, this dimension at the top, and the big dimension at the bottom, and the big dimension at the bottom. That's how we got these four dots. We scribe a line, we look at the X, we draw a line that is parallel with the thrust line. We divide this line into four parts. We take one of the four parts, move it here with reference to this vertical MAC line, and then we find the CG.